What is up, bros and brats? I'm Ink Slasher, and today we are going to be answering the question, how good is the Rift E9, the newest pistol in Call of Duty Black Ops 3? So the stats are in for both the Banshee and the Rift, but I've actually only had a chance to use the Rift. No, I did not get it in a supply drop. A subscriber actually reached out to me on Twitter, let me know that he had it and I could use his account. Super, super nice of him, and he said he didn't want a shout-out, so thank you very much, you know who you are. So today we're talking about the Rift, the Banshee we'll be talking about later this week, hopefully I get a chance to get my hands on it but the rift it's a pistol it's good and it has some really interesting stats so let's get into it so the rift e9 is a burst fire projectile weapon and what i mean by that is it fires two rounds at a time and these rounds have travel time what that means is when you pull that trigger it's actually going to take a set period of time for the bullet or laser in this case to get to your target which means it is possible to trade kills which is very very frustrating so you could fire your weapon it take a second to get to your enemy and during that time where your projectile or laser is in the air they can actually kill you and you trade kills very frustrating you've seen this in games before like halo when you could both beat down each other at the same time it just so happens with the coding in certain games and when projectiles have travel time kind of like rocket launchers while well, that projectiles in the air you can actually trade kills a little bit frustrating but important to note the main reason why it's important to note that is because when you're actually shooting at someone who is a distance away and they're running you actually have to lead your bullets and that's important with this weapon because it's a burst fire weapon. So you not only have to lead for one projectile, but two because it fires two projectiles at a time. Now, why is it important that this weapon is a two round burst weapon? Well, to understand that, we actually have to look at the stats. So this is where things get really interesting is when the stats come in. So with the stats on this weapon, the damage profile is one of the simplest damage profiles in the game. This weapon deals 51 damage at any range. Ranges do not matter with this pistol. So with that, we know that this weapon is always going to be a two bullet kill no matter what. Did I say bullets? I guess it's really not a two bullet kill. It's a two laser kill, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll go with that. A two laser kill. So yes, the damage stat is very, very good on this thing. The thing that evens that out is the projectile time. The amount of time it takes for that projectile or laser to go out of your weapon and actually hit that person. It adds a little bit of a skill gap to that weapon. So the next part to this in determining how easy it is to kill people with this weapon is looking at the rate of fire. Because with burst fire weapons, the faster the fire rate between bullets, the easier it is to land multiple bullets. For example, the fire rate on the P06 is is super super fast and because of that it's super easy to land all three bullets on target whereas if you look at a weapon like the XR2 with a slower rate of fire it's easier to miss bullets because those bullets are spread out and not quite as close together so with this weapon it actually has a pretty decent fire rate between bullets at 512 rpm now the next thing we got to look at here is the burst delay and the burst delay is massive massive on the rift it's 400 milliseconds and as a comparison the m8 a7 has a 166 milliseconds burst delay so the rift is almost double of that in fact it's more than double whereas we look at the p06 that has a burst delay of 700 milliseconds so it's kind of like right in between the two and the matter of fact is is that the when looking at the rift, it's always going to be a one burst kill at any range. And there is really no other weapon that's like that other than the P06. And the fact of the matter is, is it's like the P06 in that fact. However, with this weapon, you have less burst delay. So it's almost, in a sense, more of a sniper than the P06. The only reason why it isn't, again, is because of that projectile travel time that really no other weapons other than the Banshee have in this game, and rocket launchers, of course. So now that the bigger stats are out of the way, we can look at some of the smaller stats. Like, for example, the magazine size is 12 rounds for this weapon, and you start with a total of 48 rounds. Now, that's six bursts per magazine, which is pretty good, not horrible great but not horrible with this weapon i found you didn't really need scavenger since you start with so many bullets so i wouldn't suggest using scavenger on a class unless you're simply using this completely as a primary weapon which is doable but i still at that point don't think you need scavenger up next you can look at the reload speed the reload speed for this weapon is 2.45 seconds with bullets still in the magazine and 2.95 seconds with an empty magazine now this is the second 
worst reload time for the pistols. The worst is the Marshall by 0 0.05 seconds, so this weapon almost reloads at the same speed as the Marshall. So, incredibly slow reload speed for a pistol. On top of that, another stat we can look at is aim down sights time, and again, this is the slowest in class at 0.125 seconds compared to all the other pistols but the RK5. The RK5 has the exact same uh, aim down sights time, the rest of them are just 0.1 seconds, so slowest in class, but not by much. Again, while looking at the hip spread, the hip spread is 3 inches at a minimum and 6 inches at a maximum. Now, the minimum is right on par with the rest of the pistols. The maximum is actually the largest in class except for the L-Cars dual weld. So, pretty much the biggest hip spread in class when moving. When standing still, you're right on par with the rest of the class. So, where does this fall as a weapon? There's one more thing we gotta look at to really decide that, and that's the view kick. Now the view kick, there is a lot with this weapon, don't get me wrong, there is a lot, but it's super predictable recoil, and what I mean by that is all the recoil on this weapon is directly up. There's no side to side recoil, it just goes up. Some people will say there is, trust me, this thing just bounces up, and it makes it so easy to get headshots. I was literally getting headshots with this thing like there was no tomorrow. Now. Just as a, a thing to mention, there is no headshot multipliers, no point in going for headshots, so the fact that it does that isn't really that big of a deal. It's not like you'll miss your first shot, hit your second shot as a headshot, and get a kill with it. No, you gotta hit both shots still, even if one of them's a headshot. So overall, that recoil actually helps you at a short distance, but at a long distance, makes it very hard for you to get on a target. Now, as far as attachments go for this, there is no dual weld. You cannot akimbo this thing, and thank god, because that would be a little bit too much. In fact, the only reason why I think the marshals are super overpowered is because people can dual wield them, and that with two shotguns being held is not even fair. So I'm really glad they didn't do that with this weapon, but... The question is, how good are they really? And the answer is, is it's different at every single range. Up close, they're an absolute beast, work exactly like a shotgun, and if you hit one projectile, you're probably hitting two, so you're dropping people super quick with this thing. At mid-range, if your target's not moving, again, they are absolutely great, super easy to hit your target. When your target is strafing side to side, things get a little bit more difficult, because you may only hit one of the projectiles out of the two. At long range, this thing is very, very hard to use. Is it overpowered? So I answered that with one answer, and then as I was reading out stats, I literally convinced myself that this weapon is overpowered. And before you crucify me and disagree with me, let me explain why. So if you take this weapon, the Rift, and compare it to other two-bullet kill weapons at any range weapons. So for example, like take the Shiva uh, and MX Grand, something like that. Take their fire rate and compare it to the Rift's. So the Rift is 512 RPM. The Shiva and the MX Grand, the Shiva fires at 257 RPM, the MX Grand fires at 315 RPM. Compared to the 512 that the Rift fires at, that's a little insane. I know what you're thinking, there's burst delay and all that, and that is true. But if you compare it to another DLC weapon, the HG-40, which fires at 517 RPM, that weapon can't even be a two-bullet kill. So, I don't know, I think there's just a little bit inconsistency there, and the fact is, is with the Rift, you do have to account for the projectile time in the air, and that's so it makes it more difficult to use, but still, getting killed by this thing is super frustrating, because of the fact there is no other weapon in the game that's a two-bullet kill that fires that quickly. Even looking at the Draken, like, the weapon that is a two-bullet kill at any range, a sniper rifle, it fires at 240 RPM, so... I just, I don't understand how fast the fire rate is for a weapon that kills in two bullets anywhere on the map. I just, I literally, I didn't think it was overpowered, but then reading those stats really convinced me that this thing really is overpowered, and yeesh, a little nerf it may be in order for this weapon. But then again, with this weapon, there is projectile time, so I'm kind of torn, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think that's overpowered? Like, I see one side that says it is because of the fire rate and damage profile, but then the other side of me says, well, you have to account for a projectile time and all of that stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. But overall, this weapon is like a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 kind of thing for me. That's kind of where it performed in my hands. Definitely a good secondary weapon. You can use it like a shotgun 
if you're using a sniper rifle, someone sneaks up on you, this thing will take them out super, super quickly. So it's definitely a good sidearm. So yeah, seven or an eight out of 10, that's where I leave it. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Have you got it in a supply drop? Do any of your friends have it? Do you think it's overpowered? Let me know all of that down in the comment section below. If you've made it this far in the video, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could leave a like rating. Let's say if we get this thing to 1,000 likes, we will do the next episode, the Banshee Shotgun. So, like I said, let me know down in the comment section below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Check out my Twitch, Twitter, down in the description. And if you like these kind of videos, maybe you want to hit that subscribe button. I upload new Call of Duty videos every single day of the week. And if that sounds like something that's good to you, check out that subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, peace out.